plaintiff, Art Small, is a retired police officer. And during his time on the force, he was extremely successful in cleaning up gang activity. Art claims he has since started a video surveillance company. And he's suing the defendant because he claims her grandson vandalized his surveillance equipment. Defendant Tracy Williams admits that her grandson damaged the property, but she insists he was with two other boys, so she feels they should all be held responsible. Start with you. My name is Art Small. I'm a uh, retired licensed private police officer out of Wichita, Kansas. Uh, we focused in Wichita on gang and drug-related uh, activities, and we were successful in prosecuting uh, numerous drug and gang-related uh, matters. What percentage of crime went down? That's always what I'm interested in. Yes. Did it go down by 5, 10, 15, 20 percent in that area? Well, that lets you know whether you were affected. Yeah, I, I can't give you, uh, I can't recollect that because it's been about 20 years ago that I okay. retired. Yeah, and I remember Rudy Giuliani touted uh, the reduction, dramatic reduction in crime rate, but his tactic, in my opinion, was wrong. He, part of that was locking up low-level oh. offenders, uh, the ski, what do you call them when they, when you wipe the windshield? Oh, uh, uh, the guys, uh, when, squeegee. Yeah, the squeegee, that's yeah. the word we're looking for. You, they start arresting squeegee uh, folks and what they call zero tolerance. So, you know, you got to hear both sides. How did you do the policing and what was the effect? If the policing was done in an unconstitutional way or in a way that was unfair, we don't want that. If it was done correctly, no doubt, like you and your colleagues did, because dirty cops don't come to court, <laughs> they, yeah. they do it another well, way. <laughs> well, so yeah. you're definitely a clean, good man. Judge, the, the, the folks we dealt with uh -huh. didn't have squeegees. They had guns and knives. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm just saying the policing type. My example was of how to police. Yeah. I mean, if you sweep up everybody in the neighborhood and you get all the criminals, but you may have swept up 100% of the people and only 30 were criminals, and you got all 30, mm -hmm. but you got 70 people you shouldn't have arrested. That's what I mean by the type of yeah. policing. You could have gotten all 30, could have gotten every person that shot or carried a gun but you may have had 200 more that did nothing if the policing wasn't done properly. And that's, yep, that's right. what I believe you all did properly. And that's why I was trying to see how effective it was in reducing because properly uh, executed um, policing against violent criminals in particular, um, I'm 100% behind them and I'm 100% behind giving stiff penalties to violent criminals, but I'm 100% against faulty policing and bad policing. And I say both because sometimes you can perform bad policing because you're just not a, a skilled <laughs> officer. Right. Other times you can perform bad policing because you are a bad officer. And so that's, I like to make all that clear because I believe we have a good officer here. So thank you for uh, sharing that with us. Y yes, Your Honor. You know, you gotta hear both sides. How did you do the policing and what was the effect? If the policing was done in an unconstitutional way or in a way that was unfair, we don't want that. If it was done correctly, no doubt, like you and your colleagues did, because dirty cops don't come to court. <laughs> they, yeah. they do it another well, way. <laughs> well, so you're yeah. definitely a clean, good man. Plaintiff Art Small is suing the defendant because he claims her grandson vandalized his surveillance equipment. Continue on your background. And okay, I'll... okay. So once uh, I retired out of Wichita, I uh, started a uh, professional video surveillance company and we uh, are a, a nationwide company. We specialize in uh, video surveillance outside, exterior, commercial, industrial, hotels, motels, apartment complexes, homeowners associations. All right. And how do you know the defendant? 
Uh, I actually, this is the first time uh, that uh, I've formally uh, met, uh, yes. personal. Uh, okay. And the only reason that uh, that I'm familiar with the name and, of course, now the face is um, her. She's been on your radar for how many years? Let me hear from you. Give me some background. Um, Your Honor, um, I worked in customer service over 21 years um, until the company was bought out and then they moved to another city. So then after that, um, I. How did they treat you when they did they buy you out? They did. And you felt it was you were treated fairly. I don't feel like I was treated after fairly 21 after 21 years. 21 years. I'm like, okay, I just had nine more years to go, just nine more. But it is what it is. How I much did notice get, did they give you? Um, I got, they took us in the office one day and said, uh, oh, your jobs are going to be secure. We're going to be here at least, you know, three years. We're, we're, you're, you're okay. We don't plan on moving nowhere. Then um, later on before lunch, they took us in the office one by one and said, oh, you have, you know, 90 days or whatever. Mm -hmm. You're going to be here 90 days. And then that afternoon, yeah. no, you're going to be gone September. Yeah. So, but then they end up keeping us a little longer because they needed us. Yeah, and that's why the corporate leaders, I think, need to be held accountable. And that's why I think I'm so supportive of unions because they use the strength of the employees to go up against the corporate leaders who are focused only on the bottom line. In my opinion, right. corporate leaders are blind to what is fair and it's focused primarily, almost solely, on profit mm -hmm. over people. Mm -hmm. And that's why, did you all have a union? Uh, the factory, I was an office worker. So mm -hmm. I worked in customer service. I was an office worker and I actually trained the customer service reps. Factory workers were union, but the office you was You were management. Not. Yes. All right. Yes. Mm, okay. So. And what have you been doing since then? And um, um, I wasn't old enough to receive any type, type of, you know, retirement or anything like that. So I, I took a position as a caregiver, which I'm currently doing now. I have a client that um, I go over and, and help her with, and her, with her personal needs and taking care of her. Sounds like you have children. I think he may even say grandchildren. Yes, I have three adult children. I have uh, seven grandchildren. Two of them, which is living with me now, um, because their mother is a traveling dialysis tech. So we agreed that she could do that for two years, save up her money, and try to buy her a house. Uh -huh. So that's my way of trying to help her out. So my grandson, he's living with me and his sister. Uh, both of them live with me. And when the mom's in town, you know, she comes over and everything. How old are they? My grandson is 12. He just turned 12. And then my granddaughter, um, she's nine. How do they do in school? Adrian actually is an honor roll student. Adrian is the son, grandson? He's, he's my grandson. My grandson is actually an honor roll student. Um, he actually got skipped up a grade. Yes. He moved up. They, um, he was he in a, the seventh? Yes. The school awarded him a bicycle because of his academic and his citizenship. citizenship. Uh, he's a good student. He's a good kid. Uh, he helps his sister, which has a learning disability, and she has a speech impairment and uh, vision impairment really bad. And he helps her. He picks her up from the bus stop. He wow. uh, helps her with her homework. Um, he's a good kid. He plays basketball. He was on the volleyball team. He plays basketball on the team for the school. In the summer, he's on baseball. We got him in the baseball league. We try to keep him busy and active. That's exactly he, what you he's, do. He's a, he's, a, he, and he's a really good kid. And when it just shocked me. Okay, and that's what this is about, allegation of the damaged property. Where you all live? Oh, Indianapolis. Oh, okay. His mother's single? Yes. Okay, right. and father's not raising him. No. It's you. So I want to give you a hats off. And, uh, and your daughter. Uh, for raising a boy. Women raising boys. It is very tough. Yes. Yes. But you're showing one of the formulas. Keep them busy. Keep them in after school everything. <clears throat> and if you can't play basketball, can you play violin? <laughs> <laughs> they play violin, we're playing, they got chess teams, find something. One of my sons was, Amir, was a star basketball player at his high school. Could have went to college and played. Said he, 
He didn't need to go to college to be the man. He, he said, <laughs> I am the man. My other son, Greg, couldn't play a lick basketball. He was the team manager, though. So he had to go to his teams and the practices like everybody else. So he was busy. And they made him the manager because I think the time they did put him out there on the floor, <laughs> he made the basket at the wrong end. Uh, <laughs> he absolutely did. I'm not making it up. I'm not making it up. I thought it was a joke. No. no, it's not a joke. It's not a joke at all. Well, Sorry, Greg, but you... <laughs> all right. Plaintiff Art Small is suing the defendant because he claims her grandson vandalized his surveillance equipment. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep them in, and mothers and parents and single mothers and single grandparents, just keep them busy. Everything after school so they're too tired when they get home to do anything other than eat, watch their programs for a couple of hours, Ease some homework in, and not no ease, no homework. Make homework their priority. You have to ease some entertainment in. Don't make mm -hmm. them uh, reject and dislike their activities because if they never have any fun and all they have is activity, they're not going to like activity. Mm -hmm. All right, so my advice. Now, the property damage, what happened? One of our clients in Indianapolis uh, where the... Uh defendant lives, uh, requested that we bring in additional uh, mobile video surveillance equipment uh, due to some um, activities that they uh, were concerned about, such as drug and gang activity. So we brought a mobile uh, video surveillance trailer, for lack of any better word, but it's a self-sufficient uh, unit that we can set up within minutes uh, that can uh, remain on property and record 24-7 uh, the activity in a 360-degree radius, whether it be daytime, nighttime, has tag readers that identify cars that go by, can uh, do a lot of things. And uh, while this trailer is that video legal? surveillance... Is that legal? Pardon me? Is this for a police department? Uh, because I don't think he can do that as individuals, can you? Uh, Surveil? He, Without a warrant? Yeah, uh, on private property. This is private property. They pay you? Yes. Okay, the private property pays you. It's private, you, yep. And you don't catch anybody in the general public, though. Um, I know. If the, you can't yeah, put something out yeah, that captures yeah, if, what everybody is yeah. doing. Yeah, well, at this all is. Times through, oh, all the time, you're not the police. Yeah. Anymore. Well, these are large apartment complexes where they, okay. where they, they own acres. Yeah. Got it. Um, if it's private they own property, the parking lot, they own the lakes, they own, yeah, they own the whole sh a kit and caboodle. Got it. Uh, All right. Okay, and also, but you bring up a good uh, point, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. We do have to, uh, we still have to announce and let uh, people know that the property is under video surveillance. So nice. the signage, uh, there's blue lights flashing. Um, yeah. You'll see them um, around town and in shopping centers around uh, your area, yep. but uh, so we let them know it's not it's not a clandestine. It's okay. very obvious that. The so what happened well. here? Sounds like you're saying you you guys caught her grandson. What tell me what happened? Uh, yeah, so uh, two uh, juveniles um, um, were taped um, approaching and what approximate month and year? Uh, October third. Oh, this year. Uh, this year. All right. Uh, there's a police report which you'll find. Uh, Tell me what happened first. Okay, um, the kids, um, and I guess he's 12 years old now. Yes. Mm -hmm. The police report yes. says 11, so um, that's uh, been maybe just had a birthday. No, he was 12. 12. Okay. He had just turned 12. Okay. 12 in July. Okay. Um, so they were. Uh, Don't talk to the police and you let me talk. To them. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Boy, you get caught so, up. So. Yeah, you know, I can see his. I see his skills going around. He was 11, and uh, I guess he had a birthday. <laughs> <laughs> or did you lie the first time? No. Oh, they yeah, was talking to the police. <laughs> no, I, I really wasn't going there. I know it. I was just have. You fun. got a good sense of humor. Yeah, I, that's what I do. Fact, that's why I don't people want to judge with as good as. No, I haven't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> judge is good a sense of humor. Mm -hmm. I met several. Uh, anyway, anyway, back to the topic. Um, mm -hmm. So these uh, uh, two uh, uh, male juveniles, uh, one uh, which was identified as Adrian, if I can use his name, um, 
was identified as one of the two involved in the vandalism. Uh, the vandalism went on for uh, several minutes, probably 15 minutes or so. You do have uh, in evidence uh, a portion of that video. You go on uh, here? Yes, it's, uh, you'll notice. Well, let's uh, look at it and then we'll know. Okay. So they're playing and they throw the ball and it hits the trailer. That was a mistake, no problem. Uh, that was an accident. But then they deci decide to hang around the trailer and start dismantling it. And um, there's uh, photos of the damage uh, as uh, pages eight through 20 to substantiate the damages. And you can hear that what you're hearing there is lights being uh, tore off. Now the mass, now a big mass falls over and they take off. Okay. And what has happened since that time? Well, the uh, uh, trailers uh, out was out. Well, what happened following? Following, yeah. yeah. So um, my technician calls me and said we have. Uh, vandalism uh, going on on the mobile unit at this apartment complex. And he contacted the management of the apartment complex, showed them the video. They showed it to their staff and um, maintenance people, and they identified who the two boys were, and they identified where they lived, and both of them lived at, at this com apartment complex. And so you'll notice in your evidence, your exhibits number three, is a letter from the apartment complex giving us the name okay. of Miss Williams and her son and the address and their phone number. More of Judge Mathis when we return. Plaintiff Art Small is suing the defendant because he claims her grandson vandalized his surveillance equipment. So what happened after that? What ensued? Did someone go and speak with them? What happened? Yes, I called uh, Miss Williams and spoke uh, to Miss Williams. She's very polite, uh, very uh, concerned about what had taken place, didn't deny that it had taken place. And there was another minor involved. Uh, along a third with, one? Well, a third one took off when he saw trouble happening and, was, and apparently was not involved in the trouble. Okay. Um, so I said, uh, look, Miss Williams, uh, we've got damage to this trailer, this video surveillance trailer of about 2475. And she said, well, we would be responsible for half then. I said, well, we would approach it as jointly or severally if, if you, if we can get some compromise and agreement with the other child's father who was identified, then yeah, 50-50 is fine, but if we can't get uh, satisfaction or cooperation from either one of you, then um, in our opinion, it would be either um, singly or uh, jointly or severally, whichever happens. Who was so, the other person? Pardon me? Who was the other person or what? how would you describe the other person? The, uh, the, other, about per, the other gentleman, I did call him after I called Miss Williams. Miss Williams was very cooperative. No problem whatsoever. Um, the father of the other minor uh, took no responsibility. He did not deny it. I explained he knew he had already been advised. Oh, uh, the police had already been there um, and did a police report. Do you know of that child? Is yes. The other one? What, how, how's that child doing in school? Um, he's an he's, he, he's a average student. Okay. Then troubled? Um, yeah, he's been in trouble a few times. Mm -hmm. And who uh, is involved in his life? Do you know? I mean, his, his mother and father. His father's in the house, too? Yes, sir. Lives in the house? Oh. Yes. Okay. Well, maybe that's why he's getting in trouble. If his dad, if that's his uh, disposition <clears throat> after uh, that video of him being involved in commis commission of a crime... <clears throat> Um, whereas uh, your son or grandson who does very well and we're proud of him uh, you step right up to the plate like my mother used to 
<laughs> and said he did it and I wasn't as smart as that kid or I wasn't as working as hard or I was a bad kid. You know, my mother stepped up and tell that's the first thing out of my mouth. He bad. <laughs> you don't even have to start. I don't need to hear all that. He did it. <laughs> what are you here for, police? Take him away and just go. No jury. Hey, no jury. Come on. Get him out of here. I'm telling you, that's how my mother was. No, she was rough. straight up tough love. <laughs> <laughs> she called the, I told this story before. She used to call the police on me regularly. Anytime something happened in the project, she would call. Come check my son out. <laughs> Tell the police to come check me out. Say, he's a hood, he's a Dylan, I can't control him. Come get him. <laughs> come get me, but they'd have to let me go because <laughs> they had nothing to stick. <laughs> so anyhow, but that accountability, that's the point I'm making by my mother at least kept me from thinking I could continue to do it and get away with it. That's my point. And if he has a father in the home who is blocking you from even considering the accountability of his son, uh, I think he's making the wrong decision and that's not going to help his son. On the other hand, I congratulate you. And what do you want to tell me? Your side. I do not disagree with Mr. Uh, Small. My grandson did take part in, you know, vandalizing that uh, trailer. And like when I spoke with you on the phone, I apologize and I, I sincerely mean it. When I spoke with my grandson, asked him about it, he came clean. He did not lie to me. So um, he came out, he came clean, he said his part. But what I do think is, it. the office manager told me that it was three boys involved in the vandalism. And um, I didn't even have none of the children's name. They wouldn't give me the information. And I received one of the child's name from you. And then I asked you on the phone, well, do you have the uh, third person? And you was like, no, you don't have it. And I was like, well, then it should, because I thought it'd be split three ways and it'd be, you know, $825 a person per family. And in other words, you put it like, you're not gonna, somebody needs to come up with the money. It's my, not your job to define who's gonna get, the, get it paid. Well, I didn't have the full amount to pay. I spoke with the other person and like you said, he, he, he really wasn't trying to hear none of it. Mm -hmm. um, it was like maybe two or three o'clock and he told me to call him back. He'll call me back when he wakes up and he never called me back. In the meantime, Mr. Small had called, and I was just kind of like at my wit's end because I'm like, okay, I don't have this money. They're not trying to cooperate with me. I couldn't get the other child's name. And no, I, I, I did not call you back, and I apologize for it, but I just didn't know what else to do. In between that, um, you know, I'm taking care of my father. I'm helping my mom. It's just a lot going on in my yeah. plate, and mm -hmm. I do apologize. And my grandson was, discipline about what his action, his part in that. I'm the type of person, I did not spare the ride. He knows, he was, he was punished for his part in it. Well, I, I admire you for that. Judge Mathis rules on this dispute shortly. Is your ex denying he fathered your child and you want a paternity test? Call 1-888-VERDICT or visit us online at www.judgemathistv.com. Plaintiff Art Small is suing the defendant because he claims her grandson vandalized his surveillance equipment. Let me make an observation, and I know folks say, but I do this because we need folks. I know everybody else is scared to talk about race, and race is this, or why does he always talk about Because we need to. Talk! Black man with a black son won't talk to you about his black son's behavior. Black woman with a grandson here, represent, standing up, taking accountability for grandson's behavior. So I want to praise you, you as part of my support for black women in general. 
I have a strong commitment. Black women raised me. My mother was a single mother. My wife helped change my life. My mentor was a black woman. Black woman saved me. And I like to say, listen to this, black women saved the country. Twice. Saved the country, Civil War, and subsequent to the Civil War. How? Black women took care of the plantation owners' kids. White kid looks up from a baby on up. Amy, I love you. Years later, they see black women being, having dogs sick on them. That woman is just like the woman that took care of me as a baby. I gotta have a little more compassion. The black woman has changed the mind huh? of the plantation owner because she gave him love and he felt that love. So when he sees her being abused, he, no, no, let's hold on now. And then the second time, uh, let's just say this. Two years ago, black women made the difference in the national election. That's well-known fact. If we hadn't had somebody else elected, <laughs> who knows what would have happened to the country? <laughs> That's why I say you saved the country twice. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so when we show love, it changes things. That love changed the mindset of the children of the plantation owner. That love changed much of what we see in our community with regard to our sisters. And all of that was to say, I'm not going to let this, I'm not, I can't let her pay you anything and the best that she's doing for this child and this heroic effort that she is engaged in. She's not going to pay you anything. I am. Judgment wow. for the plaintiff. You'll get your check in a little while from Judge Mathis. I'm supporting her like she has supported our community. She represents saving America twice, and I'm going to save her from death. How about that? Right. Judgment for the plaintiff, and you'll get it before you leave. God bless you. Thank you. Actually, I feel relieved. I'm glad it's over with. Uh, I can put this behind me and move on. And again, I just want to apologize to you. You're an inspiration. And I'm... And I admire you for what you're doing for your grandson. Thank you.